Hey guys, so we're already taking a tangent for the day. Normally I would be welcoming you to Nerds and Nutrition, but as you can see from the title of this video, there has been a name change to this channel. So whether this is your first time here or you're coming back, I want to first thank you for joining me and officially welcome you to Holistic Health at Home. My name is Leslie, I'm a health and wellness coach, and I am here to talk to you guys about all things holistic health that you can do at home to take back control of your health and your life. Now before we get into today's video, I know that I had made a re-entrance to YouTube a little over a month ago and then fell off the face of the earth yet again. I apologize my friends, that was not intentional. I had found out that my dog Rico has cancer, and so I had been diligently maybe slightly obsessively researching how to help him. But fortunately, we found a protocol that he seems to be responding to well, so I am so very ready uh, to come back to these videos and open up this conversation with you guys because now more than ever, it is so very important that we educate and empower each other to get our health back. With that said, a quick disclaimer, all information that I share with you in these videos is for educational purposes only and should not be taken as medical advice. Now that we have that out of the way, and here are my top five ways that you can clean and protect your lungs. Number one, ditch dairy. Now before any of you hastily close this video while cussing me out, hear me out. I'm not trying in any way, shape, or form to take away your favorite products. Oh, contraire, my friends, there are so many amazing plant-based products out there. There are new companies coming out all the time to put out new plant-based alternatives. Older companies are reformulating their brands to bring you more palate pleasure. So there is no shortage of plant-based cheeses, yogurts, ice creams, butter, you name it. Now, if you did try a plant-based product in the last few years and you didn't absolutely fall in love, it's okay, you're not alone. Really, it's about experimenting and trying new products until you find something that you really love. But let's get into the why it's so important to ditch dairy and dairy products if you really want to clean and protect your lungs. To help you guys better understand why it's so important to ditch dairy and dairy products, I'd like to share with you a chart that Dr. Robert Morris compiled, and you can find this in his Deep Tissue Cleansing and Regeneration Guidebook. This booklet you can find as part of his International School of Detoxification program, but this chart in particular shows the breakdown of carbohydrates, fat, and protein uh, within four different species breast milk. This chart will help us understand why dairy and dairy products are so acidic and mucus forming to our bodies. At the very top of this chart, we have a human mother's breast milk. And this is the liquid that nature deemed the perfect human baby growth formula. If this is the liquid that we are designed to be drinking up to the age of two, roughly. And this we get directly from our mothers and it provides everything that our bodies need to grow into healthy, strong adults. In a human mother's breast milk, we are looking at 7.4% carbohydrates. Now carbohydrates is how our bodies get our fuel, our energy, carbon and sugar. We'll see that the protein content of a human mother's breast milk is 0.89%. Wow, if we look at that, that means that our biological diet requires us to have a lot more carbohydrates than either fat or protein. And actually, what really should be blowing your minds right now is how little protein our species actually needs to survive and thrive. So this will help us paint a picture of why when we get too much protein, our bodies aren't happy. So let's go down the list. Now we have a primate or a baboon's uh, breast milk, mother's milk, right? 7.8% carbohydrates. So it's pretty on board with the amount of carbohydrates that we would need to survive and thrive. But let's go over to protein. 1.5%. How interesting. So the species that we are most alike in this list the, the protein content of that mother's milk is still almost twice that of our mother's milk. So that shows that even if we were drinking a, a baboon's milk, we would still be getting about twice the amount of protein that we need, which would cause an acidic reaction in the body, it's going to create an immune response in the body, and it's going to hit our kidneys really hard. But 
you know, just for shits and giggles, let's keep going down this list. All right, next, whole cow's milk. Only 4% carbohydrates. So that means that whenever we drink cow's milk, we're actually getting almost half of the carbohydrates that we would need to function properly. Why? Because carbohydrates are our fuel, not protein. Let's move over. This is the kicker. Whole cow's milk, 16% protein, okay? Many, many, many times more the amount of protein that nature deemed perfect for the human species. And this is the picture that I want to paint for you guys. This chart in particular really demonstrates why dairy and dairy products are so acidic. The amount of protein that is in cow's milk is really meant to grow a baby cow into a full-grown cow. And you and I don't have to grow that much. Not to mention when we do ingest dairy and dairy products, our bodies will create a lot of mucus as part of the immune response to buffer against that strong acidity. Now, if whole cow's milk has so many more times the amount of protein than what our bodies actually need, there will be a very high and strong immune response to that level of acidity. And a lot of that congestion ends up landing in the lungs, especially given our current global pandemic and its effects on the lungs, it is that much more important that we clean out the lungs and not add to the congestion. Number two, eat more fruit. Fruit hydrates and alkalizes the body. Fruit also helps encourage lymph movement and it reduces inflammation. So if we're looking to hydrate our very dehydrated acidic bodies, we want to give our bodies the proper fuel to hydrate, to alkalize. Now a lot of people might be thinking, well why not just drink some water? Well, not all water is created equal. There are many waters, especially bottled waters, that actually have an acidic pH. So you want to make sure that you're drinking plenty of natural spring water, distilled water, or reverse osmosis water. And if you happen to find some bottled water products out there that do claim to have an alkaline pH, you can always bring it home, get yourself some pH strips, and test it for yourself. It's always worth experimenting with. But with that said, fruit is actually a much greater hydrator than water. Fruit has astringent properties that help pull on the lymph. So when we're talking about a very dehydrated, congested body, we're really talking about a lot of mucus and congestion that is locked into place. The fruit is gonna come in and start to hydrate this mucus. Now I know what you guys are already thinking. Sexy talk. But really, we gotta talk about it. So we're hydrating and loosening up this congested mucus in the lungs, but the fruit comes in with the astringent properties. Again, what do I mean by astringent? Imagine biting into a lemon and that pucker, that is due to the astringent properties of the lemon, it is literally pulling on the mucous membranes of your mouth. And that's exactly what happens inside our bodies when we eat this hydrating, alkalizing, astringent fruit is it's hydrating that mucus, it's getting it to move by pulling on it. So this is exactly what we want. We're ditching the congesting foods, but then we're replacing them with hydrating and alkalizing foods to help move that congestion out. Number three, strengthen your adrenal glands and achieve kidney filtration. So let's first touch on kidney filtration. The kidneys have very important roles in the body. One of those roles is to regulate fluids, but another very important and often overlooked, maybe not even known, role of the kidneys is to filter our lymph. The right kidney will filter the lymph on the right side of the body and the left kidney will filter the lymph on the left side of the body. With that said, we want to be seeing sediments come out in our urine because that will show us that we are indeed moving that metabolic waste out. Now the adrenals work hand in hand with the kidneys. So we have our kidneys, but the adrenals are little walnut sized glands that sit right on top of the kidneys and the adrenal glands tell the kidneys to filter. Now the adrenal glands also control our nervous system and the autonomic nervous system, especially the nervous system that controls our breathing. So in cases of asthma, COPD, emphysema, we are really seeing 
two issues at play here. We're seeing congestion in the lungs, which definitely makes it harder to breathe. You can't get that proper gas exchange in the lungs, but we're also seeing weakened adrenals, which then suppress the nervous system to the lungs, so you can't get that full deep breath and you can't blow out a full deep breath as well. So we want to strengthen these adrenal glands for a couple reasons. We want those kidneys to be filtering out that metabolic waste because what we don't eliminate, we accumulate. We want to get that junk out. But we also want to strengthen those adrenal glands so we can strengthen the nervous system. And therefore, we can take those big deep breaths. Getting proper sleep, managing your stress, meditation, quiet time, all of these things can help you strengthen your adrenals. Eating more fruit will also help strengthen your adrenals and help you achieve kidney filtration. This is by no means an exhaustive list. There are so many things that you can do to support your adrenals and to achieve kidney filtration. I'll do separate videos on each of these things at some point, but suffice it to say that this list that we're going through today will help you do these things. Number four, light exercise and breathing exercises. Now exercise is really important whenever we're talking about moving the lymph and strengthening and cleaning our bodies. Now let's talk about the lymphatic system very briefly so we can understand why we have to move our bodies to move the lymph. Now when we talk about our cardiovascular or our blood system, well that system has a central pump to help pump the blood throughout the body. That pump is the heart. Now the lymphatic system is a fluid system but there is no central pump. There is no heart to pump the lymph throughout our bodies. So our bodies actually require our muscular contractions and up and down movement to move that lymph. Our lymph vessels have one-way valves, so the lymph will only move in one direction. That's why we absolutely have to move our bodies. And I'm not talking killing yourself at the gym for a few hours every day. I'm saying walk briskly for 30 minutes, rebound on a mini trampoline for 20 to 30 minutes. Do something that you really enjoy, something especially that moves the lower extremities to really pump that lymph throughout your body. Now, when we talk about exercise and breathing exercises, we're really getting into lung health because those exercises will allow you to breathe into the lower lobes of your lungs. Many of us, myself included, are very shallow breathers. And so we really only fill the top lobes of our lungs. But when we're talking about exercise and these breathing exercises, we're talking about using our diaphragms to breathe, where we are actually taking a belly breath first filling in those lower lobes, and then filling in the top lobes. So this will help our lung health, our lung capacity, and doing this on a regular basis will only help you clean and support your lungs. Number five, use herbs as needed. Herbs are incredible powerhouses that we can find in nature. They are nature's non-hybrid vegetables. And with that said, they actually retain their original consciousness, their original awareness, if you will. Herbs are tissue specific, so different herbs will focus on different parts of the body. They are very nutritive and they have astringent and cleaning properties. So just like the lemon, when we bite into it, when we ingest herbs in the body, they help pull on the lymph and different tissues and organs to encourage them to function on their own. Please note that it is not always necessary to use herbs to achieve the health that you want, but sometimes, especially in acute conditions, herbs can really come in very handy. Now, I do want to share with you one of Dr. Morse's herbal antispasmodics that I have personally been using recently for my asthma. Uh, over the last month, because of Rico's diagnosis, my anxiety has admittedly been a little through the roof. And uh, so that anxiety has been creating a tightness in my chest I've been waking up in the mornings, uh, wheezing, having a lot of trouble breathing. Now I do have a chemical inhaler that I have used the majority of my life, but most chemical inhalers are carcinogenic and they actually suppress the nervous system. They don't allow the body to expectorate that congestion. So although they dilate the airways allowing you to breathe a little better, they're actually locking in that congestion and creating issues. So I want to share with you guys the tincture that has been really helping me and I've actually been using this in place of my chemical inhaler. 
by no means am I telling you to stop using your inhaler should you need it and, and get something like this. I wanna share with you my experience using Dr. Morse's Spasm Calm Tincture in place of my chemical inhaler. Herbs like Lobelia especially are wonderful at helping to relax the nervous system. What's happening in cases of asthma whenever the person cannot breathe is, well, first off, again, we have that congestion in the lungs that's making it more difficult to breathe, but then the nervous system is suppressed due to weakened adrenal glands, and so the the nervous system actually becomes spastic and so the lungs start to spasm and you can't get that deep breath, you can't blow out a full breath. Instead of using my chemical inhaler, I have been using this Spasm Calm Tincture and I hold it under my tongue with a little bit of water for a few seconds and really within seconds I can already tell a huge difference in my breathing. I can then take a deep breath and what's beautiful compared to when I use my chemical inhaler, I can still cough stuff up, right? Guys, we're gonna be talking about some gross shit, but <laughs> you'll get used to it. So again, it's not always necessary to utilize herbs, but sometimes in acute situations, they really do come in handy. But we'll definitely talk a lot more about herbs in the future and what herbs I recommend you keeping in your medicine cabinet at home. Suffice it to say though, for lung health, it would definitely help for you to keep some herbs on hand like moline leaf, fenugreek seed, pleurisy root, all of these are wonderful expectorants. And those are my top five tips on how you can clean and protect your lungs. My next video, I'll bring you a three lung herbal tea that you can make at home to further support your lung health. Thanks again for joining me today, guys. Thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more. I'm Leslie, sending you love and health.